Yo, welcome back to the Diamond District Studios YouTube page. I'm Tabs, aka VVS. I'm a recording and mixing engineer out of Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, let's actually get straight into the tutorial. The first thing that I like to do is lay out all my session and have all my routing making sense. Let's actually do that. And then I'm going to route everything. Now, just to lay out this session in a way that makes sense for me from both an arrangement and mixing view perspective is I'm going to take all my vocal tracks and then move them down to there. Command S always to save so that you never lose your work. Now that I have color coded and done all my routing on my tracks, I'd like to move on to balancing all the tracks before I start to apply any processing or anything like that. Okay, now I am fairly happy with balance of the drums as they are. But what you might have noticed as I was busy balancing out these drums is that the certain parts of the drums that are more clearer than others or that when I bring in more tracks um, into, um, into the mix, you start to get a lot of bleed. So what you can do is you can either apply a gate on those tom mics or you can edit them out by hand yourself which i prefer to do because you can be a bit more accurate with that but even though that's more time consuming but it's more of a fail safe method and if you don't have any of the plugins that i'm using or anything like that this is an easier method and that's what i'm going to opt for so i'm just going to quickly go in and cut out or bleed what you can do is you can use um strip silence for this if you don't want to go in by hand So now that I've cut out anything that's not a Tom hit, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to delete the tracks, but I'm going to mute them. Okay, so now that I've edited all the Toms, um, let's listen to how this sounds compared to all the bleed we were getting before. So now you can hear that everything is in focus as far as the drum shells go. Uh, let's actually start to mix these drums. I like to start with my overheads and my snare. I will first apply some EQ on my overheads. So for that, I'll just use stock EQ from Pro Tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an EQ across those overheads. So what I'm listening for is where I'm getting the most change. I'm also hearing that there's a lot of high frequencies, so I'm going to tame those as well. There's a lot of 700. So I'm just going to take those out. And then what I want to do now is just going to compress these overheads. I'm going to use a faster tag and a fast release for now. So 
that might be a bit more of an aggressive type of um, compression but i'm just going to keep it like that for now and then i'm going to apply another eq where i take out a bit more of those 700s still So now I'm going to move on to my snare. Again, I'm going to high pass filter. So I'm going to keep that EQ as is. So another thing that I can do is add a gate to this. So now I'm just going to gate this snare drum uh, so that I'm only getting only the, the hits that I want and nothing else. So that's a bit cleaner for me. Then what I want to do is just compress. Let's go with the bluey. That's more or less a sweet spot. I'm gonna double check with my overheads. Then to make things a bit nicer, I'm going to send the snare to a reverb track. Then I'm gonna send the same overheads to the same to the same track as well, reverb track. So what that has done is that it has softened the the overheads a bit. Now with the kick, what I want to do is take out some of those um, boxy frequencies and add um, a bit more attack. There's some nice click on the top of the of the kick. Now I'm going to clean up the kick even more. So now the kick is a bit cleaner, so I'm going to check it with the overheads. So now just want to play everything so far. Just feels like that snare could do with a bit more reverb. Now I'm going to compress that kick using an 1176. As well, I'll use the black key face this time. Now I'm going to rebalance everything to taste.
So I'm just going to keep it around there. And now I'm going to process the toms. And how I typically do that is I go through and cycle one part where the whole kit is playing, including the toms. Then I'm going to solo the toms. And what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of those um, 700, um, basically 350 to 700 frequencies. Then we're going to bring these tracks into balance with the whole kit. And now to make things a bit more realistic as well, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to send the toms to the room as well, but I'm going to use a different room this time and I'm going to pan them. Here's what you can do is you can just use this button here, follow main pan, and then, then it'll just basically follow whatever panning you have set on there. Cool. So now we are going to listen to what we have so far. So that sounds decent to me, but I want to take this drum mix even further and um, add a bit more to it just to make it a bit uh, better. And by that, I'm going to apply some overall drum compression. Then I'm going to basically use this VSC2 compressor. Then I'm going to compensate that gain loss by applying the makeup. So that's the compression engaged. Going to bypass it. Bypass it again. Cool. So I hope you've learned a thing or two. That's how I go about mixing drums.